Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, is it game over for one of investing's biggest magic numbers? Which begs the question, what's the magic number? Why are people saying is it game over? And is it? So, with no more ado then, the background is, so first of all, let's get on with what is the magic number. It's the price to book ratio. Now this is quoted by people like Ben Graham. It's decades old. It's a stalwart of the value investors approach. It's part of their Bible, if you like, in that sense. And it's long been one of the magic numbers. Peter Temple coined that phrase, amongst others, many, many years ago. So it's seen as a key metric when it comes to weighing up, is a firm cheap or is it expensive? So what's going wrong? Well, critics say that it basically no longer works, and it no longer works on several counts. So we'll look at those in a moment. My view is the truth is more nuanced. Like all ratios, it has its place. It works better in some circumstances than others, and it shouldn't be used alone. I'm afraid there is no shortcut. There's no free lunch with investing. If you want to do the value investing approach, you need to roll your sleeves up and do a bit more work than just calculating one number. Right, so a quick reminder, first of all, what are we looking at here? So the price to book ratio compares the share price of a company to book value per share. So you basically take the balance sheet of the company to get book value per share, look at their assets, divide by the number of shares at issue, that's book value per share. You compare that to the current share price to weigh up is the current share price good or bad value or not? Should I buy at the day's pr today's price? So it's a measure of relative value. You can compare the price to book to the companies going back in time, a sequence, and other peer group, the wider market, and so on. Rule of thumb used to be below one is cheap. I'll explain why I say used to be in a moment, but essentially, if the price to book ratio comes out at, say, a half, all right, that implies the price per share is only 50% of the book value per share, then in theory, you could buy all the company's shares, liquidate it, and sell the assets for a massive profit. That's the theory. So below one is good. Now then, the critics are saying what? Well, they're basically wading in and saying this doesn't work on firms with negative book values. So there's a technical problem there right away. And there are some quite big ones out there. McDonald's has a balance sheet with a negative overall book value. Now, it doesn't mean McDonald's is about to go bust, far from it. That's not the conclusion you're supposed to reach. It's just a function of the way its cash flows work and the way it's structured. But it means the price to book ratio is largely useless if you're trying to make a decision about is McDonald's cheap or expensive. Basically, it's pretty difficult to tell. So there's another problem. Value firms have lagged despite being cheap. So looking across the wider market, people say, oh, value's going to return as opposed to growth, if you like. It's the time for value stocks. But they've been saying that for some time. And value stocks have looked cheap, depending on which metric you use, depending on what benchmark you use, and yet they haven't really delivered the performance that that would suggest. So critics are saying, you know, what's going on? Is, is the basic message here flawed, if you like? And there are three other technical problems which, which you know, play into this, if you like, which might explain what's going on. So these are the challenge of capturing intangibles. So the book, for a lot of companies, simply doesn't reflect a lot of the value in the company. The people are missing, the brands are missing, all that kind of good stuff. You look, you look at a football club. If a football club has basically grown its own talent, that will be potentially missing from the balance sheet, whereas clubs that have bought talent, accountants let them put that talent in the balance sheet. So it gets all a bit confusing. Some clubs don't have players in the balance sheet, some do on different bases. How do you compare them? Then there's the problem of cost capitalization, research and development costs. Under some circumstances, without getting into the technical stuff here, you can put those on the balance sheet. In other circumstances, you write them off against profits. There's a bit of subjectivity there, and that decision will influence the size of your book, which influences the price to book ratio. Covering this quickly, more detail available elsewhere in my videos. And share buybacks. They can be a problem. They're popular at the moment. One of the problems is that they can, this is a technical point, reduce assets, the book, more than the number of outstanding shares, and that again can distort your view of value, is the firm cheaper expensive, using this one lens. And as if to make the point, on a price to book basis, you probably wouldn't buy any of these, because where are you seeing anything like less than one, you know, Apple, seven and a half, all the way to the Boeing, 660. And yet, as an investor, there might be circumstances under which you think, hmm, maybe I do want one or two of these in my portfolio, but the price to book ratio is screaming, don't touch them with a barge pole. Now, my thoughts. Is this metric broken? It's not quite as simple as that. So as with all metrics, it's still useful when applied to the right kinds of firms and used alongside the right alternative complementary ratios. What do, I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, businesses 
So where this will be useful is businesses where book value growth is important and reasonably reliably measurable. All right? Not in all circumstances, but in those firms where that's the case. And that will tend to be firms with a decent book of assets of one sort or another. So property development firms, investment trust companies and banks. This could still be one of your key, if not the key metric you apply. But it doesn't work as well, certainly not in isolation, outside there. You do need to be more careful. But that's the case with many ratios. Now, to find out more about the critics' argument, why price to book has lost its meaning, try The Economist Buttonwood, just as one source. And if you'd like to know more about the price to book ratio from a technical point of view, try killick.com forward slash learn, and then I'd go for the ratios tab.